football season never ends, especially since the Bears are reporting to camp. That's right, veterans and rookies are up at Hallis Hall. But there is some breaking news that have to deal with the Monsters and the Midway. And all breaking news on the Sports Cubicle is brought to you by our friends over at Sheets and Giggles. Go to SheetsandGiggles.com. Use the promo code, the Sports Cubicle, Sports from the Couch, for 15% off your next purchase. And, you know, before you go to, you know, and rest on your Sheets and Giggles, you're probably going to want to, you know, at least do something fun, something exciting. Tire yourself out so you can really get the full Sheets and Giggles experience. And when I go to Riot Fest, Riot Fest is back. It's number 15th through the 17th. Douglas Park, Foo Fighters, Postal Service, Death Cab for Cutie, The Cure. I think it's the only band older than Paul. Ooh. It's going to be a great time there. And, of course, you know, if you like going to concerts and not paying money, I get that too. Luckily, WCPT can hook you up. Go to heartlandsignal.com, scroll all the way to the bottom. You go all the way down. I know. I keep telling them, scroll, put it up top, but they don't scroll, want to. And scroll. Go all the way to the bottom. So you see a little tab that says contest. Click that contest and make sure you sign up for the WCPTA20 Club and you can enter for a chance to win a pair. I can't think of a better deal than pay nothing and get Riot Fest tickets. The Bears aren't paying nothing this coming down the pipeline. Bears and tight end Cole Komet reach agreement on a four-year $50 million extension, including $32.8 million guaranteed and $20 million in the new first-year cash per Adam Schefter and Field Yates. And on this edition of the Sports Cubicle with the Marvelous One, Dan Marver, Devin Tingle, Paul Shavari, and myself, Mike Mercado, it's a very jam-packed show. We're going to be talking about, obviously, the news of Rocky Wards. We'll be talking about the Northwestern fallout as more information keeps coming down the pipeline. But this one, the Bears are reporting to training camp. The NFL is back, baby. And we were going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun on the NFL Top 100 list coming out and a very interesting landing spot for a Chicago Bear. But really fast, Cole Komet gets this extension. This Bears team is starting to put together what they think is the core for the future for Justin Quickly, your thoughts on this signing of Cole Komet, this this extension for the tight end? I mean, I think it was a good move. As we've seen, Cole Komet's definitely kind of been, you know, he's not exactly the, well, for Fields not being a passing quarterback, I'm not going to go and say Cole Komet's his number one receiver, but he's definitely a good target. The kid's definitely been playing well, even during the Mitch Trubisky era, you know, and that's kind of just a hard task to do alone right there. So I think it's a good deal. We're not spending too much on Komet. I think the guy's a fine tight end. And in all reality, are we really going to find anyone better for that same sort of price? Probably not. And he's got he's got to be what like 24, 25? Yeah, he's, he's a baby. Really young. So yeah. we, we still got plenty of years left on him as well. I think this is just a great sign that they believe that he's going to have a breakout season. It's trying to get ahead of the curve. I think this is also placement on this Bears offense. And we'll get into the conversation we're going to have in a second. But you look at DJ Moore, what he means being put onto this offense, putting Darnell Mooney in the right spot. The crazy news of Chase Claypool being on the pup list and then seven hours later is taken off the pup list. So we'll see how he lands on this roster. But then obviously with Cole Komet, you also brought in Robert Tunyon. And he's a very formidable goal line, red zone type of tight end that you can use as a weapon. So I think it's it's good placements and it's good vibes for the Bears heading to the first day of training camp. Even though if you go outside, the storms are coming and the air quality sucks. It has, as of this recording, they had to move their practices indoors and our limited practice because of the weather and what's going on with the air. But some interesting news of a signing this early. They still need a defensive tackle. They still need an edge rusher, somebody who's going to go after the quarterback. There's a bunch of veterans out there, and we know there's going to be guys, veterans that are cut during training camp. So that's going to be the big free agent thing the Bears still have to do before the season opener comes in just, what, a month and a half at this point. But some interesting stuff about the Chicago Bears, Dev, and this comes to us from John Shipley. So during the dead time of the NFL, which there never is, but the NFL Network needs programming. We have this NFL Top 100 list that keeps coming out. Right. It's done by players, and then there's some other voting factors go on, but this is what the players believe are the Top 100. Well, Jacksonville Jaguars quarterback Trevor Lawrence made his NFL Top 100 debut this week, coming in a good bit lower than many people expected at number 96. As a result of his lower slot, Lawrence is behind a wave of surprising names on the Top 100. Perhaps the most surprising is Chicago Bears quarterback Justin Fields, who came 
came in at number 86 overall, despite being behind Lawrence in virtually every single passing stat. Despite taking a league-high 55 sacks in 2022, Field showed significant improvement in his second season with the Bears. The number 11 overall pick in the 2021 draft displayed flashes that he could be a dual-threat quarterback. Fields was the first QB with 1,000-plus rushing yards and eight rushing touchdowns in a single season, per NFL research. His 2022 breakout performance ends with his top 100 debut, NFL.com said. And you can read the entire article, watch the entire section, and, of course, the entire list be broken down. But I thought Fields was going to be on this list. I thought Trevor Lawrence was going to be ahead of him. We know that they're contemporaries. We know for every Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, and Josh Allen, there's the new generation of Jalen Hurts, Justin Fields, Bryce Youngs, and the Trevor Lawrences of this generation. So when you see this, when you see that Trevor Lawrence came in at 96, but for a local thing, 10 spots higher, Justin Fields. I'm all in believer. I'll have my soliloquy in a second. When you saw that, your initial thoughts? You're going to hate me, Ricardo. I feel like the, the places should have kind of been reversed there. I mean, both both deserve to be in the NFL Top 100. I agree. I'm not going to argue that one one bit here. But it definitely you know goes to sort of what you're kind of seeing, you know, when you're looking for the quarterback here. I mean, granted, Jalen Hurts is the jack of all trades. He can run and throw tremendously. Justin Fields, not the best passer, but he's an amazing runner. Trevor Lawrence, great passer, not the best runner. But okay, he's, runner. Like, he's athletic, I, and exactly. he's done some damage, like, especially in Clemson, and we know that he's elusive, but it's not what Fields is doing. Exactly. I was going to get to that, too, where it's like, I'm like, yeah, because Trevor Lawrence, he can run fine, too, but if you're going to say, what do you, would you consider Trevor, I'm going to ask you this, Mercado, would you call Trevor Lawrence a, rush, a running quarterback? I call, I consider him a dual threat, unlike Justin, where the duel is more favorable for him. On the running side, yes. for Trevor, it's more on the passing side. It's one of those things if either one of these guys figures out their full potential, their full powers, who know, like, watch out. So, yeah, that's just kind of my thing here. And, I, you know, when you're the quarterback, people tend to care more about the passing yards and the rushing yards here. And, you know, we've seen plenty of quarterbacks. I mean, you know, I hate the guy as a person, but Michael Vick is a prime example of a guy that no one talks about his arm or kind of talk about how his, you know, the rushing touchdowns he had there. But I think Michael Vick, you and I talk about a lot. I think Vick did have, if you look up like his highlights when he had those playoff games, I think it was against the Giants, or like Michael Vick was a serviceable arm in the NFL. It was just he was so spectacular yes. as a runner that we never saw anything like that. But there is something to that superpower taking away from your other superpowers. So I wonder in your in your eyes, like, is Trevor Lawrence – head and shoulders better than Justin Fields? Or is it one of these things where both these guys are just going to, if they're both 10 parts, ten spots apart from each other, that's just going to be their careers. They're going to be the bottom, then they're going to be in the mid-50s together, they'll be in the 30s together, and eventually they'll be in the top 10 together. I mean, they're in the same draft class together. I very much think they're kind of on the same level here. I mean, I don't want, it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a guy who's going to pass, you know, 20-something touchdowns, then you're going to want Trevor Lawrence. But if you want a guy who's going to rush you at least like five or six or maybe uh, seven or eight touchdowns, your guy's going to be Justin Fields here. The thing I see is they're both great young quarterbacks who seem to know how to control a team here. I mean, yeah, we saw Trevor Lawrence have an amazing turnaround in the playoffs here, and we have yet to see Justin Fields in the playoffs. But I'm telling you, especially with uh, Jordan Love being the you know the, the the savior for the Packers this year, he's going to you know blow chunks. I think definitely in the next three, four years, we will see Justin Fields – lead the Bears at least into a playoff game. You know, it's funny you bring up that Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields, the way they carry themselves on the field, they do have the it factor. And it's hard to say that because a lot of the great quarterbacks do, and like how could so many have it? But when you watch like Joe Burrow, Tom Brady, obviously the ultimate example, but any of the top tier quarterbacks, they never seem flustered. They Even when they're losing, even when they're getting hit, even when things are going their way, they're always in the game. Trevor Lawrence has that. Justin Fields has that. Whether or not the record's going to follow that, that's what's going to be interesting when we're trying to dissect and really scout what these two guys are. And it's brought me to this point. For me, as a Bears fan, and then as an observer, and as a critic, and as a scout, and as a Justin Fields stan, I need to see 3,000 yards passing, 800 yards rushing, and I need to see the interception rate go super down, and I need to see him get himself out of danger. I don't need 45 touchdowns. I don't need him to have a 30 and 11, but I need 25, 26 passing touchdowns, six rushing touchdowns, a couple of interceptions, because he's always going to keep you in the game. Yeah, He's a gamer. Say whichever you want about Justin Fields. 
That dude's a gamer. He's going to play all 60 minutes. He's going to give you everything. If you're in it, he's going to keep you in it. Is that better than Trevor Lawrence right now? No. If I had the option right now, if the Bears had unlimited money and both these guys were free agents, I want Trevor Lawrence. But the Bears have Justin Fields, and I am more than happy with taking that prize home. And to me, the guy has carried himself. He's carried the pressure. Look at man. This is an exciting quarterback. This isn't just Jay Cutler, Rex Grossman, Mitch Trubisky. The NFL is telling you they're hyped about him. The players are telling you they're hyped about him. The way coaches talk about him. The fact that there are a lot of haters of, from him and a lot of lovers of him. That goes to show that there is something special for the first time. A legitimate special talent at quarterback for the Chicago Bears. Does that mean a Super Bowl? No. Does that mean a division? No. Does that mean he lives up to that? No. But for the first time in your lifetime, in my lifetime, there is an exciting gleamer of hope at QB1 with number one, Justin Fields is my quarterback. I'm going to push back there, Mercado, because, you know, every draft where we wasted our first round draft pick on our Cade McNowns, our Rex Grossmans, not so much our Mitchell Trubisky's, or we made that big trade for Jay Cutler. There was excitement at that point, and then the regular season came here. But excitement being different than I'm, hope, right? I'm giving you crap. No, but for sure, but like that's the yes, argument. I know exactly what you're saying. But yes. if you were if we were playing devil's advocate, that is the argument, right? Like Chicago, we you and I have coined the phrase we're QB dumb when it comes to being Chicago sports fans. We have no idea how to scout a quarterback. But like let's use Jay Cutler and Rex Grossman and Mitch as an example. Of course there was hype. Heck, we were ready to put Matt Nagy into the Hall of Fame when everything was going the right way. But there is a different vibe with Justin Fields. Yes. Because if Justin Fields was playing for the Denver Broncos, if Justin Fields was playing for the Carolina Panthers, if Justin Fields was playing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Chicago wins would be like, can we have a Justin Fields? Oh, yeah. And I, I honestly believe that. Now, I understand everybody's a Super Bowl contender in July. Everybody is hopeful in August. But I do think for the first time in a long time, listen to the tea leaves. Read between the lines. It's what I say in the NBA season. Listen to what other people are saying, not just the the local beat reporters, not just the the big big headed uh, national brands, and not just the 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 rumor mill. Listen to the players. Remember when I kept telling them like, "Hey, listen how LeBron talks about so and so. Listen how they talk about this guy, unsolicited." That's when, like, especially like Derrick Rose, all those years where they would just, nobody would have to bring up Derrick Rose. And you, they would talk about him. That's Justin Fields. Yeah. And I think that's something we've never seen before. Oh, absolutely. Justin Fields, heck, before he even played, I was, you know, I'd be scrolling YouTube and you recommend it. So many videos about Justin Fields. It was, I think, just put a Bears uniform on just for a picture, for a photo shoot. And people wanted to run with that sort of thing. So definitely Justin Fields, you know, he... You remember when he was drafted, I'm blanking on the man who got to announce it, but he's like, oh, I'm excited. This is my team. Yeah, the, the, the my Chicago Bears yeah. are drafting Justin Fields from the Ohio State. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, definitely something different here. You know, quarterback of the week, you know, definitely going to see something here. It's like it just feels he's the – I don't want to say the face of the NFL, but he's definitely one of those faces of the NFL. I think if if you were to make like a poster of like the five players, you know, the kids want on their walls, I guarantee you put Justin Fields in that little connection there. Fascinating. You know, I've always thought it was a little hyper- hyperbolic of me to say that he's hit Madden level because I don't think the accolades have met that kind of level. But right. the sheer excitement, the potential, and the cool factor, Chicago Bears have a cool quarterback. Yeah. I think that's really, really interesting. So let's 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 go ahead and just say this. I think Justin Fields this season is the prove-it season. I, as the biggest stan of Justin Fields on the sports cubicle and when his bigger fans, because I like the kid and I love the talent and I like the story that can happen for Bears fans, the NFL, and him and for the future of young black kids in Chicago who see this this unicorn of a athlete out there that could kind of do it all and still can get better. I, though, am taking off the kid gloves. It's time to prove it. You got DJ Moore. It don't get much better than DJ Moore. There's like five, six, seven guys better than him. There's no excuse at wide receiver anymore. You've had the same coordinator. You have the same head coach. They brought in a real president of operations. You have a pretty decent-minded GM who's made mistakes but is there. The fan base is behind you. You know you're going to get paid. There's no more excuses. It's time to sink or swim. We are going to take you to the deep end. You're going to be filled with the waters, filled with sharks. And we're going to see how Justin Fields responds. I agree with you on that, Mercado. Let me ask you this. If I told you Justin Fields can have 3,000 passing yards, 800 rushing yards, 20 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, do you think that's impossible? Impossible, no. Likely, also no. Jalen Hurts in 2022, 3,701 passing yards, 22 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. 
He's so, also a god amongst men. So we know but where the we know where the li- I, I we know, know where the line going. is now, right? Like there's the the sports cubicle line. Devin has said it. It's like look at that is where I want. We need to see you if this Bears team is going to make that nine win run like we think they will. Oh, exactly. I I think the numbers you want from Fields are a little unrealistic this year. But here's the thing. This team is going to finish 500 or a little above 500. This is what they got to do this year. There's no excuse to have a losing record. Just dawned on me. We uh, we have 17 games, not 16. You can't finish 500 in the NFL. There's no excuses anymore. You got to be a winning team now or a losing team. Nine and seven, nothing less.